Welcome to Crafty Hints. I'm Chantel. I'm so excited to have you here today and do a few DIYs. Let's get crafty. Here is 10 wonderful autumn DIYs that were a few of my favorites. Now I took these mini pumpkins that I got at the Dollar Tree. There's various sizes and I just wanted to take the stems out of all of them. Next, I need to poke a hole through the center. I first tried with a straw, it wasn't strong enough. So this is the end of a paintbrush. And I think I ended up moving up to a larger paintbrush than this one. Because what we're going to be doing, if you didn't see it at the beginning, was we're going to be feeding this yarn around it. So I took a yarn needle and I just took the yarn and I'm just tying it around the hole. This will kind of anchor it in there and then I just slid that over and put the knot in the hole. I'm not sure that was necessary. I could probably leave it at the bottom so it left a little bit more space in the center. But then all you're going to do is take your needle and go around and around and around. So this is a pretty easy process. I'm going to take that yarn needle and just move that knot a little bit. And then I'll just start going around this pumpkin. I did decide to line these up going all the way around with the first one. I don't know if it's necessary, I thought that it might make it a little bit of a smoother finish, but I will show you my last one where I lined up some of it, but I kind of just let it go. Wherever the open areas were, I would go back and just fill that in. So you just continue from the top around to the bottom. And then when you run out of yarn, you just take it around, make a little knot, and just make sure that's on the bottom and then cover it up and then take some more yarn and do whatever you're comfortable with. I ended up taking more the second time because I didn't want a lot of knots to cover up, but whatever works best for you. Towards the end, you've got a lot of yarn in there, so I kind of press it down on my mat to push it through. And then I'm just going to go around and make sure there isn't any little white part showing. You could definitely paint your pumpkins the color of your yarn also so that if anything did show it isn't as obvious. So after I clip that off and make sure that it I had tied it now I'm just gonna push it down in there on both sides so that my pumpkin sits flat. And then I'll also have a spot to put my stem back in. And when you do that, you will have a couple of your strands of yarn that kind of move a little bit because you press that yarn down in there. So just fix those and you should be good to go. This is an ivory colored pumpkin that I did. Now you could add a dab of hot glue there. I didn't, I just pressed it in. It has the little Barbie things on it that kind of helps it grip. Now here's the last one that I kind of, I didn't make sure it was perfect going all the way around. And I think it still looks just fine. But I just go back and make sure those last couple strands just covered up any spots I needed covered. And then again, I will put the stem in there. You could definitely use a little branch if you wanted to. Again, the details are however you want to add them. But here's all three. I have the ivory and the blue and the green. So I have three different sizes here. Didn't those turn out pretty? I started out with this foam tray from the Dollar Tree that I used in another DIY. So I just traced that lid. Now I just continue to trim that down until it fit. 
and now a little bit of hot glue and we will just get that in there this is a glass it's one of the like clear glass salt and pepper shakers from the Dollar Tree I spray painted it ivory and now I'm just bending up the edges just a little bit so that I'll go in there and adhere to the hot glue and I think you can see I have spackling right there and we're just going to make some foam to go on top of our little pumpkin spice latte here. So I just took a sandwich bag and I took some of the spackling from the Dollar Tree and I just put it in there with a popsicle stick. Pretty easy so far, right? Unfortunately, this is where my camera starts to act up. So I lost a little bit of me putting that foam on top, which is so frustrating to me because uh, it turned out so cute. All I did was cut a little snip in the corner and squeeze out that foam to make the top. I smoothed it out just a little bit. I sprinkled some cinnamon and then I took some like cookie sprinkles and just cut them up a little bit with my X-Acto knife and put those on top. I am so sorry that my camera kept shutting off on me. Now I'm taking one of these water slide decals. I printed that on my printer. Once it was dry, I sprayed it with some clear spray. And then I did that three times. And when it was completely dry, I was able to do this. You soak it in warm water for about 30 seconds, slide it off that paper backing, and just apply it here. And I thought this was pretty fitting. It says pumpkin spice everything. Now all you want to do is take your paper towel and just keep wiping the excess water out. And you can still adjust it a little bit. That's what's nice. It's not like... A sticker once it's stuck it's stuck and it's hard to move I'm sorry this is a little bit out of frame there and I could see just a little ripple so take a little bit of water and just straighten it And at the top as well, as you can see the little bit of the bevel there on the jar. So sometimes you have to play with that just a little bit. But I think this is adorable. I'm That foam just turned out too cute. It's just a spackling and, you know, like I said, tiny dot of ivory paint. Little sprinkle of cinnamon and the cookie sprinkles. You can so do that. All I did was squeeze it on top and then sprinkle those. How cute is that? This will be perfect on my tiered tray. I started with a full sheet that I had printed on that HIPAA water slide decal paper. And then of course I sprayed it again with the three sprays of the clear spray. And then I just cut this out. Probably could have used longer scissors. Would have made it a little bit easier here. And I did just like I did in the other one. I'm going to soak it in the warm water for about 30 seconds. I also had taken one of the wood planks from the Dollar Tree and I spray painted it in white because I didn't think the chalk paint would adhere as well. Now I took some coffee stir sticks and took some antique wax and just rubbed that over. And now I'm just going to frame out my little sign. I apologize, the lighting isn't wonderful here. Um, sometimes when you're crafting you don't realize it. So I'm just measuring these and I think this makes a beautiful frame. What a cheap way to make a beautiful little tear tray sign. I love this. Again, if you're interested in those hippo waterside decals, 
I will put those down in the description box. I just love that you can slide them and put them on anything to make it personalized. All right, just hot gluing those down. Super simple. Little plank from the Dollar Tree, some coffee stirs, a little antique wax. We're on our way. Final touches here. And then I just took a file to smooth out those edges and take off any excess glue. Oh, I think it's adorable. Here's a sneak peek of the next one. Okay, one more with the water slide decal. I promise they don't all have them, but they did end up some of my favorites that I wanted to share with you. So we're just doing the same thing, and it's just so simple. Now, I probably, looking back, might have made those other pumpkins a little bit darker, but I put this together with a few graphics I had. The white pumpkins, you know, don't get as much... Um, you can't see them just as well as you can the orange. So I might not have added those, but it's fine. And so simple. I just want to show you that you can put it on, you know, many different surfaces. And I thought, what a wonderful way to personalize candles. So you could do this for Christmas. You could do it for a birthday, an anniversary. All you do is you're just pushing out all that excess water with a paper towel. And when I do print them out, I try to think of as many, you know, ideas as I can think of. That way I can print out the full sheet, spray it all, and then cut them out as I need them. Now I thought it would be adorable to embellish the lid. So I'm taking that pumpkin that was off of a pick, but it didn't have a stem, so I borrowed one from another. And now I'm just adding some leaves, kind of placing them around, trying to figure out exactly where that should go. I can see that my filming, I think, has gotten better since last year. <laughs> I sure hope so. And my lighting, you know, I want it to be the best quality that I can for you. But this is what I had at that moment but would want to share with you. Okay, just going to take a little bit of ribbon and fold that over and put that around the candle just, you know, as a little extra embellishment. Give that a little bit of glue so that it'll stay in place. And we're just about done. As you can see, super simple. I, just looking at this, I've gotten a couple more Christmas ideas. I think this could be so fun. Great um, party gift. You know, if you're going to a party, personalize it for the host. All right, just wrap this around and then we'll finish gluing it. And I think we're about set. Isn't that pretty? I just adore those little pumpkins though, my goodness. I started out with this pumpkin from the Dollar Tree and I'm just filling that hole at the top with some wood filler. Now I use some Waverly chalk paint in pumpkin and it's getting low and I've looked everywhere trying to get a refill. So I'm just sanding down that hole. Am I the only one that has issues with getting that smooth and not seeing that hole? If you're with me, comment below. I, it takes me a couple tries, I tell you. 
So I'm just painting the top of that. And in an earlier DIY, I had started to stain this already. So I decided to go back with the antique wax and just go around the edges. So both my grateful are sitting there as well as the leaf. And I just took a wet wipe with antique wax. Now I'm taking these gem stickers from the Dollar Tree and I'm covering them with some ink Waverly chalk paint. Gosh, I love the Waverly and plaid paint. That's why I became a plaid ambassador. I just love their products. Now here's some faux leather I got in the fabric department of Hobby Lobby. I'm just gluing that down across the pumpkin. And you just have to be careful because, you know, it is a more plastic textured item and I would use a low temp glue gun with it. Now just trim off the sides. And just make sure to get that all smooth. All right, so I'm touch my leaf there with a little bit of hot glue. And now I'll attach the grateful word. I just love the contrast of the browns and the pumpkin. I think it goes together so nicely. This is one of my favorites out of the four that I'm bringing to you today. And just make sure you get those little pieces of glue off. You can use your heat gun. Just be careful not to get too close um, so that you don't melt your pleather. All right, now I just took those little gem stickers to make little like nail heads on each of the corners of this. I think that turns out so cute. It just perfect accent. If you haven't grabbed those gems, I would suggest it. And here it is. Okay, we're a little over halfway through. Here is one of those foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I have seen that they do have white ones as well. So, you know, use your imagination there. Okay, so I'm just going to cut right on that circle that basically they kind of provided for me. So that was super simple. I'm just taking um, a straight edge blade there and cutting this out. And then I'll just pop that right out. Okay, then I just took this copper spray paint by Rust-Oleum and gave it a once over. And then I just shoved that down in there and flipped it over so that I could poke my flowers into it. But I'm going to start with this lamb's ear and I'm just going to glue it right on that rim. I think these work so pretty together. That light lamb's ear and the copper, how pretty. And then you just want to start getting some flowers that, you know, make you happy. I'm going to show you here that I really start playing with different flowers and other picks and things like that to try and figure out what might, you know, make this even prettier. So you got to go by your taste and what else you might be decorating in that area that it might accent. But this is too much. You're going to see I pull out all of those extras. <laughs> so I'll show you in a second. But I thought less was more. Often it is, you know, just a little bit. I just liked that soft touch of the lamb's ear. And those other textures, I think, just took away from it. 
but I'm showing you, you know, because you might like the other. So I went in with some other flowers, thought those might go together well, but here we are. I went back and it was pretty simple. As you watch this next DIY, pop a comment below which is your favorite so far. And then at the end of the video, let me know if it changed. And if it did, leave that comment on what it changed to. I started out with that canister from the Dollar Tree. It has a little metal lid and a seal. I took one of these pumpkins. They're the ones that come on the little crocodile clip. And I just took my X-Acto knife and worked my way around it. It has a little bit of a plasticky feel on the outside of this pumpkin, so it took a little bit more work. So just continue to work that around and try it back on top of your lid from time to time so that you make sure you get a snug fit. And I did this to three of them. Next, I took them out to my little spray tent. It's just a small little tent that I can put in my garage and spray these. And I use a Rust-Oleum copper spray paint. I thought that this gave them such a neat look. Look at these. Who would have thought these came from the Dollar Tree? You cannot tell. So you want to give them one to two coats, just making sure you get a nice solid covering on them. Turn them here or there so you don't see any silver or orange peeking through. Such a high-end look with minimal investment. Look at these. I think they turned out great. Next, I just took a tray from the Dollar Tree and a canning jar lid. I wanted these to be accented also with a copper. Very quick and easy. I sprayed that other pumpkin as well. I took this platter or tray from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to glue down a little bit of floral foam all the way across. I first glued each of the ends and then the middle. There we are. Now, I collected these pine cones. As I've kind of told you, hit your parks or your neighborhood. Look at those pine trees. Um, I have a couple of pine trees that have these. And they drop them at different times of the year. So I try to collect some because I know I will use them around fall and Christmas. So I just put a little bit of wire attached to the end of those. Then I decided this was too shiny. And if it did show, I might want that to be more of like a wood color, a little bit more fall colors. Turns out you probably won't need to paint it because the leaves are going to really cover this up. So it's totally up to you. As always, you want to personalize it. This is just inspiration. But when it comes down to it, you really don't see the tray much. Now to cover the floral foam, just in case anything peeks out, I put just a little bit of the Spanish moss a little bit of hot glue to hold that in place. And as you can see, I did trim off a bunch of my leaves so that I will be ready to go. Now I start just like I did with my box. I'm going to kind of put these in the corners and I kind of work out from there. I start from the bottom and I'm kind of layering and then I'll build up but I wanted to go around with the different colored leaves. I do have some oak as well as the maple. All of these are from the Dollar Tree except for those, those two maples that come together. I did find those at Michael's and I just liked the size and I thought it just added a little bit more variance. But if you can see those yellow maple leaves, those are the ones of the fabric and they're such a nice quality. But just continue building this around until it looks the way you want it to look. 
And you kind of trim off a little bit here and there, just making it your own. See that leaf at the end? Isn't that pretty? It has the oranges and the reds. Oh, I love these. I show those in my haul. So if you happen to see my haul, you'll see that. And my goodness, do I have so much more to craft. So stay tuned for my upcoming videos. I cannot wait, though, to watch the playlist and see what my friends have come up with. They also are doing leaves and fall flowers. So a little bit of inspiration before we hop into fall. As you guys know, we got to kind of go with what's in the stores and, you know, stay up on the holidays for you. Now I'm going to take those pine cones that are on the wire and start tucking those in now that I have all the leaves set. In the center, you can see I have a little bit of a hole so that I can set a candle in there. And I'll show you that when I do the, the reveal here of the finished product. Now you could put it in the glass vase or you could just put the candle on there. I am using battery operated candles, but if it's in the glass vase, you could use a regular one. Here is a super simple DIY. Don't blink or you might miss it. I took these maple leaves from the Dollar Tree and this Hurricane lion, uh, Glass Lantern. Um, what do you call it? Candle holder? Anyways, you get the gist. And I've got a battery operated candle and all I'm doing is putting these in here. I'm not going to glue them or anything because I want to be able to use this for other holidays. So just by placing them around the edge. So I started out just doing the, we'll call it the bottom, placing them in there and moving them around. I do hope that you've liked, you know, me putting some of my top 10 favorites in here. And some that I just thought, oh, this would be simple for you to get started. I will, gosh, I think I had a 15 top before. I'm going to grab that and add a few more so that maybe while you're crafting, you can just put it on, sit back and watch. I think that sometimes that's just the fun way to do it. Sometimes when you look at others' DIYs, it just triggers something else in your mind also of something they did, but, you know, something else you might have thought of. But, yeah, don't blink because this one's super simple. But I think it has a high-end effect. Okay, just a little bit of burlap ribbon, and I'm just going to take it around, and I'll give it a twist. Oh, those leaves moved a little bit on me. And then I just cut the ends of that at an angle. And these pumpkins come on like a little twist tie. You could also do the ones with like the alligator clip. But I think it's so pretty. Again, now we could use this for Christmas. 
you know, add a little something or just an embellishment around the edge. You could add some greenery, tucking that around your battery candle. Isn't that pretty? Oh, that glows so pretty, doesn't it? Okay, I start out with this Mod Podge. This is kind of a bonus DIY. It goes along the same lines, but I start out with this globe, a little bit of Mod Podge. I'm gonna make these leaves permanent as compared to the other. So a little bit underneath, a little bit on top, and here we go. I can use this one year after year. And then you can use, you know, battery operated votives, tea lights. You could use that pillar candle. So many different ways you could use it then. I don't suggest using real candles in it with the leaves on the inside. If you wanted to put a real candle in there, possibly the leaves on the outside, but I'd be concerned with the heat and the glue and you know it just making the leaves lift so i just continued i put the mod podge down first mod podge yes there we go and down first then i put some on top and i just continued to kind of use some that i had in there also it looks like i'm putting a ton but it's really not in the grand scheme and I did make sure that even where there wasn't leaves, I did still have the Mod Podge because that way there wasn't a variance between where the leaves were and where they weren't. It just looked like the same finish all the way around. Then I let it dry and here it is. Isn't that pretty? You know, you could do just a little piece of jute twine around there with a pine cone or two or just leave it the way it is. So pretty. Now here's one of the Dollar Tree battery operated votives. I believe they come in a two pack. I've seen them hanging like on end caps at my Dollar Trees. And there it is with a pillar candle. I do think I like it better with the votive in there. I should have popped a tea light in also. Okay, here's our last one. I took this, it's a pumpkin that's covered with painted burlap and I just heat it up with my heat gun and I'm just taking the spatula, kind of scraping underneath there. And then this little pumpkin sign thing was broken, so I heated that up, also blew it away, so to speak. Um, but I'm gonna save those pieces and you'll see why later. I rubbed that scrapbook paper along the edges of the pumpkin and that gave me the area to cut out. Then I covered one with the lighter paper and part of the other one with the dark paper. And then I painted this pumpkin and peacock. All super simple, self-explanatory, so I didn't slow down here for you. Painted it in peacock, cut out those pieces, and covered both of those pumpkins. Again, one of them didn't get fully covered, but it's gonna be behind it. Now I just take my file along those edges, and one, it gives it a little bit of the rustic effect. Two, it trims off the extra paper. Then I took the Folk Arc Antique Wax. I'm sure it's similar to the Antique Wax uh, because they're both made by plaid. But I got that one at Hobby Lobby. Now I'm taking the Peacock and going over my Thankful Word. And I'll just wrap 
all of the stems in the jute twine. Pretty simple, depending on the angle of the stem, how many times you'll have to glue it. I think it just gives it a little more of that finished look. A thankful maybe could have been painted in truffle also. That would have popped off the center. Now I'm taking some of the antique wax and I went around there, taking some mini beads that I'd gotten off of Amazon. That'll just give it that little more three dimension. A little glue on the back. Adhere these together. Then we'll get the other one. Just wanna line them up so that they're sitting nice and flat. And now I'm gonna pop this on there with a little bit of glue and see how it gives it a little bit of that 3D, but looking at it, I'm thinking maybe the brown would have worked. Okay, two tumbling tower blocks, as well as the little piece that was at the bottom of that sign. A little bit of wood glue and some hot glue gives you that permanent as well as that long-term hold. And a little bit of peacock. Now this is the sides of that other pumpkin sign or of that pumpkin sign that I'm going to use along with the tumbling tower block to give us two more stands. So waste not, want not, right? A few crafty hints there. Okay, I'm just going to line up these stands. I glued them on and here we are. Gosh, I hope you're enjoying this. So if you haven't subscribed yet, gosh, I hope you do and that you've given me a like. I appreciate each and every one of you so very much. I hope you have a blessed day and enjoy these other videos.